होगा ही वो तो होना ही और उसका ये है बट जावा ही शुड लर्न मुझे जितना पता है मैं एक्सप्लेन कर सकू आई थिंक एवरीबडीज हिस्सर इज कनेक्टेड आर ओके नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम सो यू प्लीज गो अहेड एंड आई विल ऑल्सो बी देयर Uh, so there will be no problem i am sure that everyone will enjoy the java subject and it is the most important programming language till today so although python is taking its place but uh, in my guess i am i am spending over 20 years in this industry so i can assure you java will stay another 10 years at least for me so so learning java is very much essential तो श्रीकांत जी प्लीज यू कैन स्टार्ट हाँ ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है बिफोर आई स्टार्ट जस्ट लेट मी टेलिंग फ्यू थिंग्स टू ऑल ऑफ आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ ऑल ऑफ फर्स दैट वी हैव दो कनेक्टेड हियर आर ओके विथ इंग्लिश एंड हिंदी आई होप और आई शुड गो विथ ओनली इंग्लिश ब्रो यू गो विथ ओनली इंग्लिश ब्रो बिकॉज वी कांट अंडरस्टैंड हिम आई थिंक कार्तिक Uh, Shai Priya also are not comfortable. Will be in Hindi. Yes, no problem. I'll remember. try my best. I am. I try. I'll try my best to explain the things in English. I don't know how far I'll go, but I'll try my best. Yeah, thanks, bro. So I can see a lot of uh, like a lot of friends joined. Like uh, Asutosh. Yeah, Asu. This is this is more. I I am actually I'm more than happy. Like I'm excited to. Interact with you all. Like I can find Asutosh, Karthik, Apurva, Bipin, Shrinivas, uh, lot of people. Uh, Swaris Bhai, so hi, Sai Priya. I think. Good Apurba. evening, Bhai. Good evening, Swaris Bhai. Good evening, Sandeep. Sandeep, Sandeep, Sandeep is looking after me. He, I don't know. He'll bite me. <laughs> Dikesh, uh, Prudin. So then we need a lot of people. So thank you all for joining. I will try my best to explain the things that I know a bit. But at any point of time, everybody, everyone is welcome. Like you can interrupt me at any point of time if you have some question. If you want to, uh, you know, make uh, some corrections on me. So everything is open here. I will try my best to explain the things. so before i start uh, can you help me in few uh, few things how many of you uh, how many of uh, us like whoever is connected here have is uh, programming background like this way or the other small uh, something uh, regarding the programming background like we know programs we have done programming in some language like that uh I don't have any knowledge in uh, programming language. Uh, Ashutosh was basically a non-IT, non not a background, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Karthik, I have. Uh, it's my first language. Then I'll definitely try to learn this. No, no, no issues. No issues. We'll go through. I'll, as I said, I'll try my best to, you know, explain the things to all of you so that uh, we all can enjoy. Karthik, I think uh, you have some knowledge in back. Uh, yeah, I have. Know. Yes, I have some knowledge, but uh, I have studied uh, last five years back, so I have forgotten everything. If you start from scratch, it will be helpful. I am planning to start from the scratch. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Again, the problem is a time constraint. Uh, but uh, from the beginning, we need to go slow, like two, yes. two, three sessions. Then we can pick the speed. Correct. Yes, we have the time, right? We can plan and we can mm, schedule. It. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Apurva, I'm just asking to like whoever is have any background in background knowledge in programming. Apurva has some problem with his, with the mic. I think she will answer in the chat box. Vipin, Vipin, I think uh, you have some programming background. I have little programming background. 
Great. I've done few programs, smaller ones. Mm. That will be that will be a great help for me. Anyway, so what I can find is mixture of people having some uh, knowledge and programming background, and some are completely new to this programming world and all. So what I'll do is I'll uh, go from scratch, like uh, what exactly programming languages are and how they are basically implemented and all. Uh, then we will move through the journey of Java. I I have planned like that. If you all are okay with that, then we can go ahead. Yes, cool, uh, bro. And uh, please help me, uh, all of you. Please help me in interacting to make the session interaction interactive. By the time we uh, some discussions and younger, please participate so that you know it will motivate all of us. Another basic thing, not in the prospect of programming language, not in the prospect of computer programming language. Uh, it's us, we all will agree with me to go to anywhere, any part of the world, anywhere in the world. Uh, is it happening for all? Or? Yes, we can buy. Yes, Farah. Not uh, audible clearly. All right. Okay, give me a second. Give me a second. Let me check my wife. My internet is This is any recording session? Or? Yeah, this is this will be this will be recorded. Sashikala ji, I hope uh, you are recording, na? Okay, so... Uh, so is it audible now? Yeah. Okay, okay. How much sorry, I hope. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting something in it before starting the hard discussion on Java. So... I just brother, this is not hard. hard. We are it's, just it's, discussing hard. Mat no, no, no. Oh, why not? So the thing is, thing is like that. See, uh, the first question comes arise: What are the kinds of Java? You know, if 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 if, if uh, somebody asks you, what are the kind of Java? I face this question somewhere. Right, so right, right, somebody right. somebody replied replied me. Uh -huh. See, somebody replied me. There are two kinds of Java. One is Mar Java, right. and the other is Mid Java. That type. The song was famous mere, by our. I have another one. Okay, but in that time, the song was playing a lot. Nikal Java. Nikal Java. So, Mar Java and Mid Java, those are the two kinds of Java. Anyway, you start. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, before getting into any computer programming language, uh, I think uh, all of us are completely uh, covered that computer architecture part, at least we have some knowledge. The computer only can understand binary language that is 0 and 1. That's for sure. It doesn't know anything about except 0 and 1. So whatever the thing I'm going to instruct the computer, that should be in 0, one, zero and 1 from format. Don't get scared. We are not going to write the program in 0 and 1. We will, I think we all know this. Why I'm telling all this? Because whenever we are talking about a language, forget about computer language for a few, uh, for a few minutes. You know, language is the only way of communicating things between uh, two, yeah. two voices. Items. Hello? Waking. Still. Hello? It is still breaking. Yeah. It is still breaking? Yes, yes. Me. There are some issues with your voice, Kanji. Issue with my voice, right? I don't know what is happening with this Wi-Fi. Mm. Take a second. Let me change the Wi-Fi. If that works. If it will be the first day, then how will it go? Take a second.
Uh, is this fine now? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's good. Okay. Ah, uh, I don't know. It is not working this time. And please confirm once you can able to see my screen. And now it's yeah, it's now visible. Visible, right? So we were talking about yeah. the language. As you all of all of us know, I am not uh, going to explain that. Language is a uh, way of communicating things between two items. As far as my knowledge is concerned, there are four things between which we are basically communicating. We can communicate. A machine can communicate with a machine, or a machine can communicate with a human being. A human being can communicate with a machine, and a human being can communicate with a human being. So these are the four kind of communication we basically know. Right? In each of these communication, only one component is vital and required. That is the language. And you all again agree with me. The language should be compatible to both of both these sides. One, the person who is uh, communicating. Second, the person who is receiving that communication. So that is the normal way of communicating things between two items. It could be man to man. It could be man to machine or anything. Anything it could be. So that's why we have different set of language. If if I know English, if I know Hindi, and if I know Odia, if I have to talk a peep talk with a uh, people who know Chinese, uh, then you know this is disastrous. Like I could not able to communicate with these people who is who know Chinese. So what I what uh, I require, I require a translator who can translate my things into Chinese and vice versa. So that. You know, communication can hold good. So, to learn the language more precisely, we need to understand how the languages has been generated from back in in the back in back in days, like when computers are are basically created, like first generation computer, second generation. I am not going that. You know, the first language, as I have shared with you, is writing programs in zero and one. This is a machine level language where machine can directly understood. and the next generation of language we have started to translate transfer some of the zero and codes into mnemonic codes i'm not going in detail about this because i know you all of all of us knows about this i'm just refreshing this one i'm just trying to touch high level language then followed by java so that you know a journey of java will be completed i hope all these are okay with all of you right yes ma'am Okay, thank you. So, on when we think about machine level uh, language, see, for a human being, it's it's always pretty difficult to write everything in uh, zero and one. Say, for example, if I have to write uh, add two numbers, twenty three and thirty four. Back in days, when the computers are generated, there will be only one language called as machine level language. We need to convert this twenty three into a set of zero and one, plus is into zero and one. 34 into 011 then finally your, our computer can understand and give us the result this was the life back in the early days when computers used to start right and i don't have to explain you all are very all are capable you can understand writing everything into 011 is more than disastrous like as a human being i cannot remember all the, all the things in 011 even if at some point of time if i have to write my name you can understand the problem right so few years later uh, the people that the pin sir pin is it no it was it, it was shared shashi ji aap pin kijiye usko you can pin dubar मैंने दोबारा शेयर कर दिया है अभी एक्चुअली एक सिस्टम चल रहा था मैं कहा गया yeah. अच्छा अभी शायद स्क्रीन दिख रहा है या या ओके सॉरी सो व्हाट वी डिड वी हैव ट्राइड टू कन्वर्ट सम पार्ट ऑफ दिस बाइनरी प्रोग्राम और मशीन लैंग्वेज प्रोग्राम इनटू सम सिंबॉलिक सिंबॉलिक फॉर्मेट्स लाइक instead of writing this uh, 0 and 1 for this addition what we used in the next generation of language maybe there are a couple of 0 and 0s and 1s might be there 
but some symbols are now replaced with add some symbols are replaced with subtract means not all the parts are changed few parts are changed and those codes which are replaced by some english alphabets we call those codes are mnemonic codes right now the language is called as assembly language the first generation language is machine label language second one is assembly language now here the real problem starts assembly language okay we can understand for a human being it is bit comfortable that zero and one we cannot able to remember all the things in zero one but it's it's pretty easy to write the things things like add subtract product store like that those are bit easy than the earlier language right so now the real problem begins here we can write in this way no problem but your com our computer it knows only 0 and 1 very rigid it can only understand 0 and 1 nothing else so in between what we need to do we need one more uh, component called as assembler so assembler is now a component which will help me to convert this these assembly language into machine level format so that computer can understand and it can give the produce the output as per my instructions so first generation language second generation language so second generation language is bit easier than the first generation language but here we need to carry one extra logis that is assembly language that is the assembler without assembler i can do anything because i am not the person who can convert that one into zero and one and your system our system only understand zero and one the next story is again this is again a hectic task now few people thought few developer thought let's design some more some easier component now what they did they have designed some language called as high level language what they did they converted all the instruction into a human readable form means english only if i have to instruct the computer to add two numbers 23 and 43 exactly i have to represent it in this way i think this is completely in human readable form every human body can understand what has been this uh, written and what has been instructed now the same problem is there even we can write 23 and 43 no problem we can write but computer won't understand similarly as the as in the second generation case we we were requiring an assembler here we require translators now at that point of time translator came in two different flavors first a translator called as interpreter second kind of translator is called as a compiler so two translators two very powerful translators has been designed whose responsibility is to convert high level language into a machine readable form language so that machine can understand my language and give the output as per my instruction fine i think up to this the people who are starting from the scratch they are comfortable others for others i know it's a, it's a boring one uh, yeah we are, hope... we are good yeah we are... no no it is good that's it yes so, super is good yeah thank you so much uh, so the problem here is we need to differentiate uh, you can like there might be a question biggest doubt sir brother why they have designed two instead of one some some points are there some things are there who have that has encouraged them to either go for in, uh, interpreter or go for compiler interpreter or compiler both of them are both of them are called as language translators right and trust me both of them they are software they are not hardware so a lot of people have a thought ki in, in interpreter and compiler that there, there might be hard no they are software how they are work working like suppose this is my program i have written a program regardless of which program maybe c programming language maybe c++ maybe java whatever the language it could be i have written some program in is up in in some programming language i need to pass my program through a translator the responsibility of the translator is to convert that particular code into equivalent binary code or machine label code now you know machine label code is directly understand understood by your, by our computer and here i can direct we can directly understand this one is directly understood by human mind human body right and this component helps me to convert this one into the this one now the program that i have written is called as a source program means 
Source program is a kind of program that is written with the help of a programming language called as maybe C, C++, Java, Python, any programming language it could be. Now, once that one passed through either a compiler or an interpreter, finally it is getting converted into machine level. This one, sometimes this one called as object program. Uh, yeah, it has, it has different names for different programming languages, but in general, we have accepted it. Source program is written by the human being. Object program is the output of a compiler or an interpreter. This is generic. This is generic, but when we'll go through Java, the scenario, the story will be completely different. But for to make that interesting, you need to follow all the, all the things. I hope up to this, uh, uh, up to this, that, that should be some clarity about uh, the translator. I hope everybody following what I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to explain. Yes, Miro, we got the things. Yes. Yes. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, so let us differentiate between this interpreter and compiler. Again, I'll tell you what I'm what I'm explaining now. This is not exactly in connection with Java because interpreter and compiler both are differently defined in Java, but in generic they are different. So don't mix both of them. As we grow in the programming, we'll understand the difference. So for this class, for up to this, what exactly interpreter is and what exactly compiler is, let me explain. With an example, a simple one. Suppose I have written a program that consists of five lines, five programming lines. I pass these programs, this particular program through an interpreter. And also, I pass this program to a compiler. Now, let us see what exactly the dif difference between these two. Simple difference. As the name is interpreter, the role of the interpreter, once you submit the program to the interpreter, interpreter will take the first line first. It will convert the first line into object program or machine readable program code, execute that one. Once everything is completed for line one, then it will go to line two. Once everything is completed for line two, it will go to line three. If it found any problem, maybe syntax error, maybe some spelling mistake, maybe some grammatical mistake, whatever the mistake it could be. Due to some reason, if line number three could not able to convert or could not able to execute, this interpreter will stop its execution right from here. This is the behavior or this is the working of an interpreter. Interpreter always go line by line not whole at a time. As, as, as I said, it will go for line number one first. Convert, interpret. Second one, second one, convert, execute. Third one, convert, execute. And this procedure will go on and on till I reach end of the file. This is the role of an interpreter. Similarly, for compiler, compiler will take the whole program at a time, whole program. It goes for a checking called as syntax checking. If syntax means uh, the rules by which you are writing a program, like you have written the, written the proper statements or not with the proper rules and regulations or not, if it found any problem, it will give you all the errors at a time, not one by one at a time. Once you clear all the errors, then you can proceed for execution. That is the only difference. Compiler goes, Whole at a time, interpreter goes line by line. But both have one similarity. They are, both of them are called as language translators. Right? Now, here I have a question. Question is, interpreter and compiler, both are softwares. Now, once I give the interpreter, the, the interpreter, uh, let's say, uh, I'll, I'll go, go like this. A person is there who can translate Chinese to English, only Chinese to English. Now, can this person be used to translate Japanese to English? Can it be? He knows only Chinese. To, he knows Chinese. He knows English. So he can translate Chinese language into English. Now, I asked him, can you, brother, can you please translate Japanese to English for me? No. Immediately, he will say, no, brother, I'm sorry. So what I mean to say is, for every language, there is a unique interpreter or unique compiler. 
C compiler cannot able to compile Java program. Java compiler cannot able to compile C program. So every program has its own compiler or interpreter. I have to follow accordingly. Fine? Yes. That's great. So now I think we understood the, uh, the stages of programming languages, how they are generated from zero, from machine level language to high level language. Apart from all these languages, we have one more language called as a fourth generation language. We are calling that one. That is basically SQL. Uh, Swaris Ji will take, will take the responsibility of this SQL in RDBMS. He will explain everything about SQL. Uh, we are not going in detail about SQL. So now, why I have discussed all this? Because, you know, the first thing we need to understand is Java is a high-level language. It means the statements I am going to write in Java are purely in human-readable form. We only need to understand how they are used, when they are used, and when, where I can, how I can uh, improve the efficiency of the program. That's why I've gone through all these uh, basics. Right? See, when, when languages are generated, then the next big, biggest question they are in the mind of all the developers. Uh, let us create a simple model for programming language. How the programming language what, is, what are the different types of ways that we can able to solve a particular problem? Say, for example, somebody has assigned a bigger task to you. Suppose this is a particular thing I need to go for a challenge. This, this is a particular task I need to perform. So they have designed a model called as procedure-oriented model. Or somebody called this as procedure-oriented approach. What exactly that one? What they did, they have converted a complex task into small, small number of small tasks. Now, a bigger pro program is now converted into small, small programs. That you might that you might call that one as function, you might call that one as method, whatever you call that one. Now, instead of executing this one as a whole, we are go, we go on calling each of the function using using an, using the, any, any programming language and finally got the output. This kind of approach. We are calling this approach as procedure-oriented approach. We can take an example, example of that one. If I'll ask all of you, because I know the thing that I'm going to ask is common, is very famous. You, you all, all of you, all of us know here. If I'll ask excuse you, excuse me, excuse yes, me, uh, Sekanji, I have to leave now. Okay, so please continue, and hope uh, you all will enjoy. Uh, I will continue. Uh, our uh, discussion on uh, uh, Sunday, obviously for DBMS, and uh, in uh, next week maybe I will be there for full time. No problem. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarish. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sarish. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good, night. Good night. Anyway, so what we are discussing about procedure unit approach. Now, if I'll ask you, can you please tell me the procedure of uh, preparing Maggi? I think this is very very known to all of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. 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 Yeah. So, uh, first thing, well, a, a, most of us said, "Come on, boil a water in a vessel, then wait for two minutes, then put your maggi packet, cook the mag maggi maggi masala, and then then it is ready to serve." So these are few steps by using which I can easily prepare maggi, right? Now, these this is this particular approach is called as procedure oriented approach. I have not prepared the Maggi as a whole. What I did, I have converted that and that one into small, small functions. First function, let's boil the water. Second function, put the Maggi in the boiled water. Third function, put that one, put that uh, Maggi, magic masala into Maggi. Fourth one, cook for two minutes. Next, it is ready to serve. So these are the five steps by using which my Maggi is ready. This is one problem. I hope all are, all are following me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And this approach is called as procedure oriented approach, right? And this approach has n number of advantages and n number of disadvantages. Advantage, you know, when a complex program is converted into small, small programs, it's very easy to uh, find out the error, very easy to find out the error, very easy to write the codes. So things are easy, right? But again, there is a difficult part also. 
difficult parts are suppose yeah i said you all of us know the process now in between what what we did we have prepared the maggi for 10 people we are preparing the maggi for 10 people we have brought all the things all the things all the things the solution is there now in between i asked can we go for 100 people now again i have to restart the process right again i have to restart the process because things are procedure oriented we need to restart the entire program we cannot create that one dynamically no we cannot create so this as i said each approach has its own advantage has its own disadvantage so procedure oriented approach or functional approach has some advantage has some disadvantage this is one approach so now the developer thought let's think the problem as we are visualizing in our in a normal human brain say for example the same example we i'll go through the same example i'll go through whenever somebody ask you uh, my project is to prepare a maggi first approach how how we how we basically see that one first approach we are noting down all the ingredients that we require am i right all the ingredients maybe maybe maggi water a container whatever then what we did when we are going for boiling the thing see boil is a behavior boil is a process whom to boil water is to boil so now water is an object who needs to be boiled clear here we are not emphasizing on the process we are emphasizing on the object water needs to boil clear maggi needs to be put so maggi is an object needs to be boiled is a process in procedure oriented approach we have one step put that one that's boiled boil the water we are not going through take this one take this one there is one object we are not thinking of that one but here we need to think if we are taking a water what are the properties of water what are the behavior of water like behavior is we can boil the water let's say we can freeze the water we can drink the water these are three different properties of water among all these behaviors i need one that is boiling so i'll go for it i hope you all are following me the differentiation is not basic differentiation between between a procedure oriented approach or and an object oriented approach right yes bro it's clear so in order to understand object oriented approach as we go on we have n number of examples that that is that will give us much clarity uh in op, let me tell you the advantage of object oriented whenever we are going for object oriented approach we need to understand three things one is uh, definitely a class one is definitely an object and the third one is a reference variable we need to understand about this three then we can e easily understand object oriented concept can you repeat this one small bro this one two three first one is a class okay. second one is an object third one is a reference variable okay okay, okay. we will we'll understand in Two three minutes with a simple example. Then we'll continue the discussion on features of Java and why Java is there and why we should learn Java. We'll go. Through. Now uh, think of in here we will not use abstraction and encapsulation. Abstraction and uh, encapsulation will go through once we could able to understand what are the basic things of an ob object oriented program. Then those are the features: encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism. Uh, security a lot of things are there that will follow but to understand all of them we need to understand the basic structure because yes. polymorphism okay, okay. is an example so of starting where huh. so fine it's so let us understand all these three things because to understand see these three things are not only for java this is for any programming language where object oriented is supported even this of the object oriented model that we have we can also follow the structure no problem at all this is generic so let me let me tell you what exactly a class is what exactly an object is and what exactly a reference very simple uh let's say we all of all of us know uh, i'll take a brand let me let me uh, talk about uh, i hope if i'm writing mi 4a tv this is quite all this is known to all of us right there is a model mi tv before mi tv was 
brought into market the de- engineers who ever there for mi they definitely proposed a model fine definitely proposed a model in that model they have given some specification right the ram size the operating system uh like the screen size the color let's say these are the properties of mi tv <coughs> and using all these properties what we can do we can uh, browse the internet we can uh, run youtube we can uh, see all the tv channels like that so here two things you need to uh, concentrate actually properties are like what is the ram size what is the internal rom size what is the operating system these are the properties of mi and these are the behavior of mi properties behavior attributes you can say functionality clear and this is what i'm talking before mi tv came into market clear before it is produced i'm talk i'm just before the production it is just the designing phase clear <coughs> i hope you all are following right mm-hmm. so now if i if i'll say this is a blueprint of mi 4a i hope i'll be correct this is a blueprint this is a skeleton fine correct now this one is called as a class few things are pretty clear here class is class basically don't have any existence don't have any existence it is on a conceptual model i propose a class called as mi 4a the name of the class is mi 4a that means it contains some properties like internal and ram size uh sorry ram size rom size operating system it can contain what is the screen size and uh, the color of the tv then using and um, what i can enjoy as an end user what i can see i can browse the uh, browse the internet using this tv i can see all the movie movie channels i can browse the youtube also so these are the properties of mi 4a properties and behavior right if i combine properties and behavior together what comes comes out is called as a class i hope clear yes ma'am. yeah yeah thanks yeah now once the plan is ready plan is approved plan is ready now this is for manufacture now all the tv that are that has manufactured from this design will have same property will have same functionality right suppose yes yeah suppose 1000 televisions 1000 mi tv sets have been manufactured now all these tv sets have same functionality maybe color color might be different ram size might be some some cases might be different but not all the cases but maximum properties are same almost all the properties and all the behaviors are same now these tv sets does this tv set has existence or not yes like yes. i can i can see that tv i can touch that tv right it has some existence right and what when i say this is a mi tv that means it contains all these properties similarly when we say int a can you recall when i say int a means a hold all the properties of integer right similarly when i say this one is a product product of this class which class mi 4a fine i understood the properties of mi 4a basically built in here now this is what called as an object am i clear about object i hope some clarity there from like class and object right yeah yeah now from a basic point of view which comes first class comes first or object comes first class comes first here okay. class comes first if there is one class how many objects i can create n number of n number of class. so the relationship between a class and a object is from one class i can grow from n i can hmm. it's like a template right yes it's a template only class is a template only class like is a template a... class is a blueprint class is a concept yes please class hmm. is a blueprint of an object like 
yes you are absolutely right it's a blueprint only it's wow. a blueprint only when it is coming into reality it's an object or sometimes you define object is an instance of a class but class is basically defined as the combination of behaviors and properties together but if you if you ask few people about the definition of the class you can you, you have some answers like class is a combination of similar kind of object but if i have to define a class with the help of an object why should i define it that's what my that's what i think when we say class that should be a clarity what class contains properties and behavior that's it nothing else only very simple the properties what it contains and the behavior what i can do in in that in that class right now i think these two terminologies are pretty clear class and object yes sir yeah now, one class i have n objects now the next one mi tv specification i brought one mi tv then with that mi tv tv manufactured manufacturing company gave me a remote right they provided me a remote to run this tv right now with the help of this remote i can operate this television set now this one is called as reference understood with that small remote i can operate that tv tv is an object clear now reference is or reference is also an object but reference is object it is not an object of mi class reference is a so this remote is a reference to my mi tv with the help of that reference i can happily enjoy all the properties all the behavior of mi tv tell me is this clear so it's like an object which controls that uh, uh, machine right ha see everything that has an existence is called as an object similarly yes. remote is also an object but here our discussion is this particular objects acts as a reference to the mi okay mi tv right mm -hmm. so we are we are talking in that way in this remote is an object obviously because for this remote there should be a blueprint obviously mm -hmm. obviously there should, be, there should be a blueprint so now the question is for one object how many reference how many reference can be created one more than one how many like for one class i have n objects for one object i have what do you think for one object i have one reference only number of reference any any uh, it's a it's a normal one for one tv there will be one one remote or more than one remote there will be one remote mostly one remote but but it can be two it can be three it can be four right yes obviously so one for one object i can have more references isn't it mm -hmm. so the relationship are pretty clear for one clear one class i have n objects for each object i can have n reference n number of reference so yeah. these are the hierarchy of these are the basic concept of any object oriented programming language any object oriented programming language. and this is how java is built we cannot do anything in java without this class without the object without the reference variable i think the basic things we i'm just trying to explain if you if you are following then my i think uh, i'll be more than happy yeah 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 we almost followed yeah thanks so much yeah, if we yeah. can summarize quickly that would be good but yeah just maybe in Yeah. No. Uh, at the end end of the session, we'll summarize the entire thing yes. that we have discussed. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Thanks so much. We'll that would be good. We'll do that. So we uh, we are we have uh, just discussed few things. Like we have started from the language uh, history. We have started from binary language. Then we have followed with assembly language, where zero ones are replaced with mnemonic codes, and followed by. A, assembler who will help me to convert that assembly language into machine level
कन्वर्ट भाई आपका आवाज थोड़ा कट रहा है आई मीन एग्जीक्यूट द प्रोग्राम नाउ व्हेन वी व्हेन when we are coming to a programming language and where when we are into going to solving a particular problem we have two we are following two different approach one approach is procedure oriented approach where we are emphasizing into functionality not into object but in the second format the most priority or those most priority always goes to object yeah priority are functionals here the priority is object and for to understand object we have just discussed three very badly things class object and a reference variable these three are very very vital to understand any object oriented programming concept i hope up to this we don't have any problem right okay, let me tell you how this java anybody anybody here interested to know the history of java that i don't think we require that one no oh, we should not go there yeah yeah right so i'll directly talk to them let me let me clear one thing java is designed only to follow object oriented programming language so java is object oriented programming language only but if somebody ask me is is java a pure object oriented programming my answer will be no no it is not it is not we have some reasons we will follow but yes it is true java is an object oriented programming language right so let me tell you the first difference between java and any other programming language like just earlier i i have said with all of you whenever there is a programming language we need a translator that translator converts the program into machine machine readable format so that my computer can understand and it can directly give me output so this is the normal scenario or generic scenario for almost all the languages not java like in c we compile the program then finally it is converted into object format or binary format we have executed the program done no problem at all fine but in java let let me let me tell you the problem here in this approach <clears throat> whenever we are downloading an exe file see whenever i said this is in machine readable format definitely it will be in a exe format executable format now whenever we are executing this particular one there might be chance some very intelligent people there in the world who what they can do they can inject their code directly into this they can in, inject their code directly in this so sometimes we 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 say that my program is been hacked or there are some virus there in my program what this particular codes will do they will manipulate in your, your program in a different manner so this is where the threat is i hope this part you could able to follow suppose i have written a program to add the add two numbers now they have injected one more code which will convert my plus into multiplication now the story is wow i have written the program for addition now it is multiplying so this is what the effect of virus is but that is not virus that is only the programmer or the people who have inj injected their code into exe that is the problem <clears throat> but in java the scenario is completely different java that's why java is called a secure programming language now suppose i have i have to write a program in java this is a java program now once i have completed writing a java program the next step is to compile obviously to compile we have a java compiler this java compiler as 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 the as per the discussion this code should be converted into machine read please listen to my words i said the compiler is responsible to convert the source code into object code means machine readable format but this was not true for java i repeat this is not true for java java says if if you pass this program through my compiler what i'll do i will convert that java program into some intermediate format not machine code not machine code some intermediate format and that format is called as byte code 
I repeat, this is not in machine readable form. This is in some other format. That format is called as byte code. Definitely, there may, there may be a doubt. Brother, if it, it is not understood by the machine, how come we able to execute? How come we able to produce the output? Because machine can't machine can't understand. No problem. This is not machine dependent language. We have n number of solutions for that. What Java did? Now Java said, once you compile the program, please spread that program into one more component called as interpreter. Here interpreter is not a language translator. I repeat, in Java, interpreter is not a compiler, not a language translator. This interpreter is called as JVM, known as Java Virtual Machine. I repeat, once I write a Java code, I need to compile it. Once I compile the Java code using Java compiler, it will give me an intermediate code, that code is called as byte code. That is not a machine, that is not in machine readable format. This is an intermediate format only. That intermediate format should be fed into one more component called as interpreter, which is none other than JVM, that is Java Virtual Machine. Now, Java Virtual Machine is responsible for producing, <coughs> sorry, this Java Virtual Machine is responsible to producing the corresponding machine label code. Now, JVM is responsible, I, we can say in general, JVM is a component which is responsible to execute this bytecode. So, bytecode cannot understood by machine. To understand that, we need one more, comp one more thing that is called as interpreter. You can ask me here. If this is the case, performance of Java will be definitely degraded. Am I right? Because we are carrying lot, lot of lot of additional luggage. Compile, compile this one, interpret that this one, then go for execution. Come on. This is rubbish. I think this might be the outcome if somebody thinks like in a normal in normal aspect. Am I right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. But here See, if we need some security, we need to sacrifice a bit of performance. You will agree on that. Simple. If my entire house is locked, if I want to secure my entire house, I'll go on putting locks in almost all the doors. So to open those locks, I need time. Of course, I need time. But by doing that, my house is secured. You will agree with me. So to make it secure, a bit of compromise can be done. So performance might degrade, but not that way. Not that great degradation. Small degradation will be there. That's for sure. Now, how it is secure? Let me tell you. So here, the thing is, let, let us see. Let us say that the people who are very intelligent people, they are trying to write their byte code directly here so that it can be getting converted. There might be a chance, right or wrong? In the same case. But here, here, your ZBM, Java Virtual Machine, is very very intelligent. It has a <coughs> sorry. It has a component called as code verifier. Code verifier. What it will do? Code verifier will confirm that the code that is the byte code. Basically, that byte code is came from a valid Java compiler or not. If it is not came from a valid Java compiler, it won't get interpreted. That means even if some person injected his or her code, since this particular code is not came from this com this compiler, JVM said, boss, I don't know you. You please move. You please go back. So those parts will not be executed. So chances of getting corrupted up or chances of getting changing my programming code will never happen. So this is the way how Java maintains security. Trust me, if you are downloading any Java bytecode program, any Java JR file program, you are safe. There, there, there cannot be any kind of code which will, you know, uh, make harm to your computer. Because Java is secure, and this is the mechanism. This is the this is one of the mechanisms 
why it is called secure so for here two definitions has been already changed that is the definition of the compiler and definition of interpreter previously what we discussed compiler will convert the entire one into machine code here no compiler will convert the entire one into byte code now interpreter basically the name of the interpreter of java is called as jvm jvm will not a language translator is basically there to execute this byte code i hope all these things are a bit clear regarding java what exact how java is different from all other languages so this is how java is different this is one part only this is we say java is secured in that if you have any question we can go ahead bro one thing uh, in java compiler itself we have uh, java virtual machine right java compiler itself we are java virtual machine no no see if somebody is uh, using java 12.12.0 .12 onwards they might they might go for only one statement java followed by something dot java that doesn't mean ki we have java compiler is inside java uh, the jvm is inside java compiler no let me tell you what exactly two things are there one there are two different kind of users one user is called as a programmer one user is called as the user or your client for which you are you are creating a creating a application creating a software now the programmer need to write the program compile the program test the program means execute the program but here this user only need to execute the program we don't need to compile the program we don't need anything else am i right okay for this programmer we have a component in java called as jdk java development kit java development kit is one component where java compiler java interpreter all are there fine but for user or the client only jre is there jre stands for java runtime in environment which is a part of jdk because this particular person only need to execute the java program he doesn't he don't need to compile the program he don't need to write the code so since jre is inside jdk and jre can be separated so we cannot say java compiler contains interpreter i hope you got you, you got that clarity yes got it so if if i uh, plot the structure actually how java will look like this is what java jdk is this is what jre is jre means your jvm and maybe some libraries but here java compiler is there so the entire one is called as jdk so jvm okay. is a separate component and java compiler is a separate component yes got it thank but as a programmer we need both so whenever we are installing java we have to make sure ki we are installing jdk not jre because using jre we cannot able to compile the program we cannot able to write a program and compile the program we can only execute the program and in java you know the thing that is that can be executed is only byte code nothing else but to create a byte code i need a java compiler so java compiler belongs to jdk not belongs to jre so after this if we'll download java and try to use it please make sure you are downloading zdk one not jre i hope can you can please please shrikant bhai shrikant bhai jo code blocks mein java run hota hai kya ah oh, okay okay good good good, 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 good. Hmm. as i as i just said yes. just said java jdk is a component who, which which will provide me tools to compile the program and to run the program jre is one more tool that will only provide a tool to run, run the program now to write a java program what we need we need an editor and java unfortunately or fortunately i don't know java do not provide you any kind of editor java don't have any editor so we can use lot of different editors we can use notepad we can use uh, sublime 
we can use notepad plus plus we can use eclipse we can use netbeans we can use intel j we can use cloud code blocks where i can write my java code so to write the java code i can follow any editor if that editor has a facility or if that editor uh, allow me to assign or to incorporate my java compiler into its uh, editor then i can happily compile my java program even if staying in that editor otherwise it is not possible that purely depends upon the editor you are using and what kind of java platform to what kind of java platform it supports we have lot of different kinds of editor like the famous editor the people who are using uh, who are bit expert in java they are using eclipse some people follows uh, sublime some people follows uh, netbeans so different kinds of java editors or java ides are the ides stand for integrated development environment are there but as a beginner i'll always suggest all of all of us here whoever is learning java from scratch i'll honestly uh, want everybody to initially don't go for any ide right try to write the program in the small editor like sublime or notepad compile it run it so that once five tenth of base java basics are completed you can happily switch over to any editor otherwise if you will directly switch over to editor lot of things will be there in the background you could not able to understand otherwise editors are very very good but not for the beginners that, that is not recommended for the beginners code block i think code block uh, is uh, a good choice you can use it Uh, so, so I hope. I hope. Ah, is. Shrikant, why your voice is breaking? Ah, uh, that was a call. Call that time about this. No, I think now. I think now it's okay. Ha. अरे क्या होता है क्या होता है कोस्ट कॉल आ जाता है आ जाता है ना बाइक ना बाइक ना अरे वाइस पर वाइस पर काम नहीं कर रहा है कोई 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 Eco six or six or seven speaker on his leg or so I think uh, we have only discussed few basics of Java. I think up to this, uh, I have tried my best. I don't know you all. अरे बहुत ही था. अरे इसका इसका ये 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 class order क्या होता है? Sorry, sorry. Class 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 order. Class order. Class order. हाँ हाँ. ये byte ये byte 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 convert convert करने की जरूरत है क्या? Uh, no, class, so, class, class is one is part, one part, but class but has a lot of a lot of other things. When we when we go for my 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 that part that part is everything about class order, everything class order, class order, order, class order linker linker maybe maybe load balance load balance everything will everything will discuss. Somebody is writing something in the chat. I hope. Hmm. Signed echoing echoing sound is echoing. करके somebody somebody is on I hope. लैंग्वेज we might discuss few features of java we can expect this as a seven marks question in our semester also i i have seen lot of uh, universities lot of uh, colleges putting these questions in their uh, semester exams and tests please write down the all the features of java so in short java has lot of features but i'll only discuss few of them um this is to start with this is again this is a simple programming language this is a language which is called as platform independent uh jdr jbm ye sab to platform dependent hai na good question actually jbm is platform dependent but jdk is not platform dependent sure. i'll explain i'll explain that one some simple programming language platform uh, independent Uh, one let me tell you one thing i am very very bad at writing um, spelling mistake is very common to me 
कोई दिक्कत नहीं है चले नो दैट्स दैट्स माय प्रॉब्लम आई लिटरली आई एम रियली सॉरी फॉर दैट बट आई एम वेरी वेरी बैड एट राइटिंग ऑल दिस मेरा देखेंगे तो और हालती खराब हो जाएगा Uh, we are also call this one as portable programming language java is secure i have already explained one of the feature why it is secured uh, of course java is object oriented java is robust you can say java is uh, this is one of the best feature of java multi programming no it is not functional program it is only object oriented program So that is the difference between Java and Python. Python supports both of them, functional as well as object oriented. But Java But only object oriented. But Java, Java eight ke baad to. Ah, I understand now. Java in Java eight, they have introduced two things. They have introduced a concept called as Lambda. They have introduced one more con- concept called as functional interface, right? But you know, these two functionality doesn't fulfill all the functionalities, all the functional behaviors of Java. That's a still Java is struggling with uh, functional programming. Hmm. Uh, if you even if you follow Java 17, same same problem is there. Multi-threading is the biggest uh, hit in Java. Java is also called as distributed programming language. Uh, and one more feature I want that is what that is uh, we have already discussed about this one. Java is not only interpreted. But also compile. Java is one program in the world which is not only interpreted but also compiled. This is one MCQ. This one MCQ. Hmm. Java is just a compiled, compiled and interpreted. Not only compiled, not. And uh, yes, then we'll only discuss these properties. If you go to, we'll have a lot of properties. Like a number of properties are features are there in Java, but we'll discuss a few of them. Simple platform, independent, portable, secure, both robust, like this. I'll discuss three of them. This was the next thing. Simple as we know, Java is simple. Hey, can't buy. It is. Tell me. Boy, your voice is a little break. I don't know. I'm getting it. Everything is happening. Yes, it's getting a little bit more. Yes, it's getting a little bit more. यहाँ पर ही सेम सेम प्रॉब्लम भाई आज 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 मेरा आज मेरा नेटवर्क मिल गया ओका दे रहा है ओका दे रहा है शायद हाँ शायद से भाई से भाई इसलिए ठीक है काम कर काम कर रहे हैं पीएस को रहने को रहने से नेट कनेक्ट करें कनेक्ट करें पूरा टप पूरा टप पूरा टप भाई आप भाई आप एक डिवाइस में साउंड ऑफ साउंड ऑफ के दी साउंड � मेरा एक ही डिवाइस है डिवाइस का सर्विस का प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम हम लोग के मोबाइल पर पता नहीं मेरा भी एक ही डिवाइस है भाई आपका स्पीकर ऑन है क्या ऑन है क्या मतलब कर बाहर है कर बाहर है क्या नहीं नहीं मैं मोबाइल से कनेक्ट हूं आपको आ रहा है क्या रिगन रिगन भाई हां मुझे भी आ रहा है मुझे आ रहा है अच्छा 1 मिनट रुको मैं माइक म्यूट ही कर देता हूं प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं होगा शायद ये अभी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो गया हां शायद इंडिपेंडेंट के बारे में बता सिंपल जो हम पहले जाते हैं ना सिंपल मतलब इट इज वेरी इजी टू लर्न वेरी इजी टू लर्न See, even बहुत बच्चों ने lot of students ask uh, like, sir, is it uh, mandate to learn any other programming language? Is it mandate to learn C, C plus plus before Java? I said no, not at all. If you don't have a programming knowledge, that's it. That is also excellent to learn Java. To learn Java, that sh- that should not be any prerequisites. If you have, that's fine. But if you don't have, no, it's not like that. You cannot cannot learn. You can learn hundred percent. You can learn. It is very easy to learn and very easy to write. Two features: platform independent and portable. Right? These are very very vital features. Let me tell you what exactly that one. Platform independence means it can run on any platform. Simple example: suppose I am writing a C program in my Windows machine. This is a C program running on my Windows machine. I I compile the program and take this program into into a Linux platform. Now my question is whether I could able to run that same program in Linux platform. The answer is no, because 
C programming language is not platform independent. They are platform dependent. Platform independent means if I write a program program in Windows, that program will be happily run on Linux, happily run on Mac <coughs> or any other operating system. Platform independent means write once, use anywhere. I repeat, write once, use anywhere. Or run anywhere, W-O-R-A, right? Means, uh, I'm writing a Java, Java code here. I'm compiled that one, let's say, in a Windows machine. So what I find a bytecode. Now, who is responsible to run the bytecode? As we discussed, your JVM, right? JVM. Now, here, see, next two minutes is very, very vital. Now, JVM is responsible to convert this bytecode into machine-readable form. Now, the question is, which machine? Machine containing Windows, machine containing Linux, machine containing Mac. Which machine? Now, the real struggle begins. Now, you can see, JVM itself is not in machine independent. JVM for Windows is not compatible with JVM for Linux. It's not compatible with JVM for Mac. No. JVM for Linux is different. JVM for Mac is different. JVM for Windows is different. JVM itself is not platform independent, but the bytecode is platform independent. Once I have converted that end into bytecode, now the JVM installed in Mac can happily execute it. JVM installed in Windows can happily execute it. JVM installed in Linux can happily execute that. We don't have to rewrite the code. That is the only difference. Java, ZDK is platform independent. No problem at all. But JVM is not platform independent. Overall, we say Java is platform independent. We can run Java happily on any platform. But to run the Java program, one basic requirement is there, JVM. If JVM is not there in your system, you cannot able to run any Java code. That's for sure. Well, yes, 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 yes. Because you need to understand that for Windows, you need Windows JVM. See, whenever you are downloading Java, Java comes in different flavors. Java comes in exe format for Windows. For uh, Linux, it is VIN or maybe in Gonzi format. In uh, For uh, Mac also, that particular format will be there. So it is, if you go to Oracle site, Oracle website, you'll find all the Java versions. So I hope all of us should use latest version of Java so that we can learn new things. Java has been announced a lot. Like if you follow Java 8, 8 after that, in uh, the biggest... Uh, Change came in 1.5 version. Then after 1.8, tremendous uh, functionalities have been added. Tremendous functionality. So if you install that, you will enjoy. I'll I'll go to a very funny question. Uh, like we basically use we basically use like Java. We say what exactly uh, we basically ask in some forum. What is a what is the gender of Java? Uh, this could be a rubbish question, right? This is only a fun question. This is nothing related to any, any technical things or like that. We used to discuss this one. Java, what exactly Java is? What is the gender of Java? What do you guess? The people who know Java, definitely, definitely. Gender, male, female. Okay. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why? 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 I am going with gender not to say. No, not Why we call? Why we call? We call basically Java as the girl. Girl. Why? Why? Say it. 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 Say Born and broaden Sun Microsystem, right? After Java 1.5, now Sun Microsystem is gone. Oracle is taking care of it. These are the reasons why you call Java as a different name. There is no technical proof on that. There is nothing like this. Is only a fun question, fun 
fun kind of activity that is like that. So don't please take it otherwise. Shikam bhai, हाँ बोलिए पक्का JBM platform में independent होगा ना शायद क्योंकि वो byte code को interpreter और compiler दोनों पे move करता है ना JBM Linux और Linux का तो बात का process अलग हो गया वो तो JBM independent नहीं हो सकता नहीं हो सकता JBM it has to be dependent आप एक simple सी चीज बताओ विंडोज का जो आर्किटेक्चर है लाइनस का जो आर्किटेक्चर है मैक का जो आर्किटेक्चर है वो अपने हिसाब से कोई किसी से मैच नहीं करता राइट विंडोज जो फॉर्मेट को समझेगा वो फॉर्मेट को लाइनक्स नहीं समझ सकता वो फॉर्मेट को मैक नहीं समझ सकता हम आई राइट ओके नाउ बाइट को तो एक फॉर्मेट में आता है ठीक है ना तो रोल ऑफ जेबीएम इज नॉट टू एग्जीक्यूट रोल रोल ऑफ जेबीएम इज टू कन्वर्ट दिस बाइट कोड इन टू करेस्पॉन्डिंग मशीन फॉर्मेट नाउ अगर जेबीएम इंडिपेंडेंट हो गया तो आपको पता है ये कितने साइज का होगा यू हैव टू राइट द कोड फॉर JVM should contain all the codes of Windows, all the codes for Mac, all the codes for Linux, right? So, one side, one, no, three, three different things will be removed. Then you will be confused about who to run. Right? Mm-hmm. 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 This JVM is sitting here. Windows has Windows ka JVM. It has its JVM. It has its JVM. That's why Java has clear that if you want to run the Java program, you need JVM to run the JVM. You need JVM to run जाके तो विंडोज का जेबीएम इंस्टॉल नहीं कर सकते कर सकते हो क्या नहीं कर सकते लाइनक्स में बैठ के तो आप विंडोज का नहीं इंस्टॉल कर सकते ब्रो वन मोर थिंग यस प्लीज इफ जावा कंपाइलर इफ इट कन्वर्ट्स द प्रोग्राम टू बाइट कोड देन ओनली दिस जेबीएम विल कम इनटू पिक्चर राइट एक्जेक्टली इज दिस इज मैंडेट दैट दिस जावा कंपाइलर विल like uh, for all the programs it will uh, for sure it will convert to byte code huh? absolutely oh, okay fine, fine absolutely okay fine thanks ma'am got it. it 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 has to be it has to be compiled to byte code oh, okay clear okay because that is the format that is the way java basically built in okay got it bro clear yeah. so i hope uh, this platform independent kind of thing is Bit clear to some extent. Yes, it's, that, it's, that is yes, a very yeah. very good. Java is platform independent, but JVM is is not platform independent. Please make a note of it. It's a very good question. Even lot of time interviewer ask is basically ask this question. And what is portable? <coughs> portable we enjoy portability due to this platform independent in platform independent nature. Portable means. If a program is written in Windows, I can carry that program to any platform. I can carry that program to C, I, Windows, I can carry that program to any other platform. This is portable. In portability, it says you can carry that one program one program into different areas. Portable means it is easy to carry the same way. If it is, it could not be, if it is, it will be no, if it won't be uh, platform independent, we could not able to enjoy this portability feature. Portable because of platform independent. If platform independent can be seen, not there, portable will be not there. Simple, right? So these two features are basically dependent on it. The portability is dependent on this platform independence. Secure one part I have declared. Oops, also we have discussed like the class and every other thing. Remember, in a Java program, we cannot do anything. Without a class, if there will be a Java program, there has to be a class. Private, public, different issue. There has to be a class. Without a class, Java program does not exist. And it supports n number of object-oriented features. We'll go through one by one at some point of time. Not only class, all three should be there, right, bro? Class, object, yes. and see, whenever whenever we are talking about object-oriented programming, these are the basic things. Class of different reference for all okay. the, all other programming languages also. Okay. And the the la- next one I'll uh, conclude with this feature, robust. See the feature. This particular feature we say 
रोबस्ट मीन्स कोड नेवर फेल्स जावा कोड नेवर फेल्स दिस टैग लाइन आप बताओगे भाई कोड तो फेल होता है आप ऐसे कैसे बता सकते हो कोड फेल नहीं होता नहीं बेसिकली इट हैपन वेरी लेस चांस टू फेल द कोड्स आर फेल रोबस्ट सी टू अचीव द रोबस्ट फीचर वी हैव डिफरेंट डिफरेंट थिंग्स विल आई विल स्टार्ट आई विल गो विथ एग्जांपल या देयर आर टू थिंग्स वन इज कंपाइलेशन सेकंड वाज इंटर इंटरप्रिटेशन यू नो Yeah, in order to run a Java program, I need both compiler as well as interpreter. Both I need both. The responsibility of compiler is to convert things into bytecode. In that process, what it does, it checks n number of things. Not one. of course, it checks. Number two, it checks for type compatibility. This is the most valuable feature. Type compatibility means. this is a simple example in c programming language if i am writing integer a is equal to 10.23 will it be valid or invalid excellent this will be absolutely valid but by mistake in java you we all are trying to write this compiler will definitely give you an compiler error this is what called as type compatibility check and this is the responsibility of java compiler yes that this is why this is why it is called as strongly typed fine this is number 2 number 3 there are few exceptions i'll go through what exactly exceptions are that are caught at compile time so lot of few things are there which are basically caught at the time of compilation even before going for execution so two way check checking is there one is compiler checking second one is interpreter checking so run time checking is there compile time checking is there that is the reason why we say code never fails so failure code failure in java code basically happens very less very less that's why that's why we call this one as robust one other mechanism is there called as exception handling exception handling means simple exception handling means <clears throat> uh, let me tell you uh, the, the exactly the things what is what exactly called as exception suppose you are working you are working on a project the project had a deadline of 40 minutes you are working on it and in the next 20 minutes you have to present your times already started you have start working with the project 30 30 minutes gone you are working on a laptop or a desktop unfortunately due to some problem your power is gone you are working on a desktop without a ups your power gone so entire thing that you have created not saved this part is gone you have see power failure is a we know power failure might be there we can expect but here we have not made any arrangement for that power failure this is the problem without exception so this is the problem without exception handling mechanism if you don't have exception handling mechanism this should be your life if power gone entire thing that you have done is gone but java gives you n number of exception handling mechanism where you can manage all these all these errors all these exceptions the simple way i can put an inverter i can put an ups now my job is done if there will be a power failure if you should take the other part similarly java says if you expect some error in this code put that code in a mechanism called as exception handling mechanism so the exception handling mechanism in java is so strong that we can handle almost maximum exception that can be generated from a program not only predefined exception but also we can create our own exception so not only compile time in run time also we we say if in run time there is an error can you please skip this code now i can skip this code my program will happily execute so these are the two reasons for which i can say java is pretty much robust or in other words java code never fails 
I think uh, is that clear or any explanation required? I don't think. So it's ten already. So I need to uh, stop it. Uh, stop right here. But if you have any question, any clarification, if some people require, we can go for that. Are all are connected? Thank you so much. Please, please, please.